Well, earlier on in the programme, we met Andy, who's looking to spend what at the moment? About 15 grand. On a soft top roadster? Yeah. You've already had the chance to drive the MX-5. Loved it. Loved it. What about the MGF? Well, Andy will get a chance to drive it very soon out on the road, but first of all, here's Richard Hammond with the lowdown on it. Well, the MX-5 may well have reinvented the concept of the two-seater roadster, but the Brits can really claim to have originally invented it decades ago. And the original MGs, of course, were really good examples of the whole concept. Well, the newer MGF carries on the same traditions very much, but it is a little bit different. Things have come on a bit. For a start, the engine is... Uh, well, it's over here, because the MGF is mid-engine, which is good news. It's great for even weight distribution, and that's to the benefit of the drive. Many versions are fitted with the 1.8-litre VVC engine. That stands for Variable Valve Control. Basically, it's a clever system that allows the engine to alter its characteristics according to whether you're driving a bit frisky or taking it easy around town. It is complicated, so when you're buying an MGF, make sure you get that full service history. And in general, they perhaps don't wear and tear as well as some other cars, so do be careful. There is some pretty good news, though, recently, because if you really want to have that bit of British heritage in your open-top motoring and you fancy an MGF, it's just been replaced, which means this outgoing model should be cheaper. So in the showrooms, haggle brutally. Don't play top dollar, and you could do very well. Now, I think you could probably say about the Rover MGF is that this is the kind of definitive roadster because it's mid-engine and it's rear-wheel drive, unlike the MX-5, which is rear-wheel drive, but of course it's got the engine in the front. So we've got the engine just behind us. Um, how does it feel? It feels quite responsive uh, with respect to the steering, but I, th I think the seating position, I feel I'm sitting on it rather than in it. A bit too high? Just Yeah, just yeah. slightly too high. Um, the steering itself, um, I don't think it feels as um, wheel-placingly accurate as the MX-5. Right. What about clutch, gearbox, things like that? How do they...? Um, the gearbox, it's, it's a nice gearbox, but it's... I still don't find it as nice as the Mazda's. It's, it's a bit... It sort of wafts around in the air a bit. fairly cheap, it's only £9,000, it's done what, 40 odd thousand miles. So if you really thought, well, yeah, I like the MG, I like the concept of it, I'd say spend three or £4,000 more and get a, a nearly new one. So Andy, what do you think of the MGF, the 1.8 VVC? Impressed? Yep, great drive, but I don't think it's as involving as the Mazda MX-5. I think that this is a car that promises a lot, but doesn't quite deliver. Certainly does. I looked at the MG badge and I thought, well, it's got the MG heritage, it's got all that history of great roadsters, and it goes some way to delivering that, but I think it falls slightly short of the mark. It's a shame, really, so Andy's not too keen on the MGF.